Hey there. Um, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tricks to do when I'm recording acoustic guitar, particularly on kind of a country track or maybe a, uh, a folk track or even a pop track. But I love to double the acoustic guitars, pan them left and right, and then in the middle put a high strung guitar. So I'm going to show you how I might do that, and then I'll put the mp3 in the video and we can listen to it um, and you can see what what the vibe the, uh, the the final effect is okay and um, I'm using a Gibson Dove 1990 Gibson Dove and I'm using a weekend bluegrass pick and I've got my Gefell mic about eight, eight inches from the sound hole this is a Gefell uh, UMT 70 S and uh, I really like the sound of this one it's kind of one of those things where uh, I did a session and the, the engineer had one of these and I just love the guitar sounds I got now. Keep in mind that probably was the skill of the engineer and not the, necessarily the microphone. Um, but in this case, I, I've, I've enjoyed using this microphone for years now. I really, it's my number one microphone. Um, and I, I put in here just a, a drum groove to play along with. Two, three, four. That way I've got some inspiration when I'm, when I'm playing the guitar if I'm originating it. If I'm not originating it, then um, obviously uh, there would already be drums there. So let's uh, let me let me give this a shot, okay? And you won't be able to hear the drums because I'm just going to ears here. Okay, so I panned the, I panned the uh, Gibson on my left, and now I'm going to record on the right channel, on the right track. I'm going to record the Martin. This is a 70s Martin. I'm not exactly sure what year it is, but it's a different sound. I'm going to use a different pick. I'm going to use a, a weekend um, gypsy pick. A gypsy jazz pick. It's very thick. It, it makes a lot of it makes a lot of noise. I love picks that make noise. Okay, so recording, doubling what I just did. Okay, and now for the fun. In the middle channel, I'm going to put a high, str high strung guitar. And uh, I've done videos on this guitar in the past. This is a Loudon Parlor guitar, and I've tuned it high strung. And what that means is basically I put skinnier strings on the bottom four strings. So they're up an octave. The easiest way to do this um, is to take a 12 string set and split it in half. So the high, the high set you put on a high strung and the normal set you can just put on a normal guitar. So you get two sets for the price of one. And I'm using a Lixer. Okay, so now I'm gonna double it. You're gonna really hear some, um, let's see. I'm also going to use another pick, a different pick. I'm going to use a thin pick for this to give it even a brighter sound. Because it already sounds bright. It already sounds bright, but it's even going to sound brighter with a, with a thin pick. All right, let's go back to the top. I'll try to record this, see if I can do it.
so now I'm gonna bounce that and um, I'll put it in the video and you'll be able to hear what I did and I'll also put down the the chords that I played um, and you can see it's just it just a, is a great way and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna boost the um, high strung more than I normally would just so you can really hear it I like to use it just a little bit so maybe the the left and right acoustics are up here and then the high strung just barely sneaking in just kind of brighten up everything um, and then to give it even more of a kind of a spatial Thing. So I am going to bounce that and listen to it now. Check it out. simple. Basically I took a D chord and I, I uh, took off the second finger and I'm just alternating strings. I'm going fourth string, second string, third string, first string when I'm picking. And then I put the second finger back down on the D chord but I took off my first finger. So basically what I'm creating is a G major 7 with a D in the bass or you could also call this a D4 chord and I'm doing the same pattern. strumming part I just play D open with the open first string and then to D and then I went to G and I didn't put down the B the first finger because it's, I feel like it's a little muddy so I'm muting the A string and I'm taking my pinky off and I'm going to the first finger on the second fret of the first string and that gives you a G, a G major 7 so you're kind of going from a G5 with no third to a G major 7 also with no third Simple as that. Anyway, the effect is really, really cool, and uh, it's when you want to kind of spread out. And you don't need to use different guitars. You don't need to use um, uh, two different acoustics. Uh, you can obviously use one acoustic and just pan it. And you try to play as close as you can. You won't play perfectly. Although what's interesting when I double when you double acoustics, sometimes you're really, really close. And in those seconds, those milliseconds where you're everything is lining up really close. It almost as if it's mono for that split second, for that nanosecond. And so you have the stereo guitar and all of a sudden, boom, for a second there, <laughs> because you, you strummed it exactly the same or something, everything lined up. Sometimes it'll go, I don't know if it'll happen with this, that'll be totally kismet if it does. The other thing is, another trick is you don't have to have a high strung guitar. Um, you can just take your regular guitar and, uh, where's my, oh, here it is. You can take a capo and you could capo say, so we're playing D, I could capo maybe at the 7th fret. So I'm doing uh, um, D2, so that would be, uh, got, got a tune. But the idea is that you could play, you could transpose up so that double with a higher guitar and I do that a lot too so if you don't have if you don't have the um, high strung you don't have a high strung or didn't bring it so I could go 
Uh, so with the first chord was D2, so it'd be And then C, uh, major 7, G major 7. And that would work as well. Um, and then it go this way. And it would kind of sound like a high strum because you're going to be up almost, in that case, I'm up about a fifth. Okay? Uh, I hope you find an opportunity to utilize this. The other thing you can do is you can always just play with two people and create that kind of effect live with two guitar players. I remember when I was teaching clinics back in the 90s, um, I would talk about trying to play with another guitar player and I would have two guitar players stand on chairs facing each other playing the same chord progression and then I would have people walk in between them so they could hear they would walk in between the two guitar players so that the sound holes were right at ear level because they were standing on chairs and they could actually hear the stereo effect of two guitars um, and that was designed for I was teaching worship clinics and a lot of times you might have two guitar players on stage at church at the same time you might have two acoustic guitar players and if you did you know and they're playing two totally different kind of things, it may not work as well if they, is, than if they try to play the same thing and then the sound man can just pan things left and right and you get this fuller mix of two guitar players basically playing the same part. Anyway, hope this helps. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hi, Strive. Oh, my gosh.